Today's video is about a topic that I am very passionate about, something that I have dealt with a lot personally, and that is why I wanted to do this video for you very early on in this, whatever you want to call it, my candid series of videos. So I'm going to try my very best to stay grounded, not get too heated about this because I have a tendency to do so on this topic, but we'll see. Deep breaths, Gina. Okay, I think I'll be okay, but I can't make any promises. So the topic of today's video is about offset embouchures. So first of all, I want to read you the definition of embouchure just so we have that clear. The embouchure is the way in which a player applies the mouth to the mouthpiece of a brass or wind instrument. Okay, so a regular embouchure would be classified as someone who would play centered on the lips like this. So an offset embouchure is when you play off to the side here or off to the side here. Typically for flute players, they would play off to the left side just the way that the flute is made. That's usually the tendency. So I've heard a lot of people in or seen a lot of people say in a lot of comments, well, she's playing wrong and all these different things. And I've actually had this happen in person as well. And so I wanted to address this. I think there is a lot of misinformation about offset embouchures. I want to clear it up as best as I can. So that's why I am doing this video. So let's get started. So basically, embouchures are going to vary from person to person, whether or not they have a regular embouchure, a centered embouchure, or an offset embouchure. Why is that? Well, think about it. Everybody's mouth is going to be different. Their lips are going to be different. Some people have thinner lips. Some people have a more full bottom lip or a more full top lip. There's different shapes to lips. People have either, you know, wider mouths or more narrow mouths. So everybody is different. And if you look at a bunch of pictures of centered embouchures, you'll notice that everybody's embouchure is still different. It's not all the same, even though it is technically centered, they are not the same embouchure. So with an offset embouchure, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you're doing, doing it incorrectly. And my response to them a lot of times is just, why? Why is it wrong? Well, you're supposed to play centered. Okay, that's fine. Well, why am I supposed to play centered? Well, I don't know. That's just the way you're supposed to do it. Okay, I, for me, that's not a good enough answer. For me, if I'm able to have the flexibility with movement of my lips while I'm playing, so I'm able to produce the tone colors I wanna produce, I can produce the dynamics I wanna produce, if I'm able to move between registers easily, if I'm able to produce a good sound on the instrument, then there is nothing wrong with my embouchure. And I was very, very lucky because my teachers that I had growing up validated this for me. They didn't ever once try to change my embouchure in terms of uh, the actual placement. Of course, they would throughout the years be like, okay, well, you know, in order to do this, let's try this or that. But in terms of the actual placement, they were never ever suggesting that I should move to a centered embouchure. Let me go back to the beginning so that you have a little bit more understanding as to why I think I have an offset embouchure. This is not true to everyone who has an offset embouchure. It's just my particular story. So I started playing, as many of you probably know, when I was four years old. So a lot of little kids will have what is called a teardrop on their upper lip. And it looks like this. It'll go like this, like that, right on the center of their top lip. And some people grow out of that. Some people don't grow out of that. I still actually have a little bit of a teardrop on my upper lip. So I have not fully um, grown out of it, I guess. But when I was younger, it was a lot more pronounced. And so it was almost impossible for me. I don't think I actually would have been able to produce a sound with a centered embouchure. So I actually, I, I don't know if I've ever told this story. Um, I, when I started playing when I was four, we 
my teacher, we first had a wooden dowel and we had corn pads where the notes were and then we put a weight on the bottom of the stick um, just so that we would know the weight of the flute and know where to put our fingers. And we also learned like how you're supposed to stand. The next step was we had a fife. It's like one of those Yamaha fifes. And um, we did that, we started with that. And I remember that first day of that lesson, I went in, I tried so hard. And this was my first time trying to produce a sound on an instrument, you know, four years old. I could not produce a sound. I tried so hard and I was on my way home crying to my parents and I was so upset that I couldn't produce a sound. And now I think I realize it's because I was trying to have a centered embouchure. Went back the next lesson and I was fine and I was able to produce the sound. But very soon I, I had an offset embouchure and it was just my way of being able to change what, you know, go with what I had and change the embouchure slightly in order to actually produce the sound on the instrument. So I started with that and never changed the embouchure since then. And I mean, think about it this way. If I would have changed teachers and let's just say when I was 10 years old, at that point I would have been playing for six years. That's a long time. And I would have developed all my muscles around my mouth at this point. And I, yeah, who knows what would have happened because I think it would have really degressed my flute playing because I mean, even like a lot of us have had braces. I had them twice. You know how like in that first week or two you sound like crap. <laughs> You're like, you feel like you have like to make your lips so much bigger to get over the braces. And then of course when you get them off it's the same scenario that you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like my lips are so huge and you have to like uh, pull them back It's just a little bit. That would have, it could have completely derailed my flute playing and I don't know if I would have become a flute player. Like it could have hurt me so much that I would have never even gotten back to the place that I was with an offset embouchure. And I would have master classes, I would have lessons with random people, um, well not random, but like flute players, and some of them would actually tell me, you need to move your embouchure. And their reasoning was just because, oh well you have to have a centered embouchure to be a good flute player. Well let's talk about some of the best flute players that there are. I'm just going to name two, there are more, but I'm just going to name two for the sake of this video. Um, one of the most world-renowned flute players that there ever was, was Ron Paul. He had an offset embouchure. Also, one of the best flute players today is Dennis, who is the principal flutist of the LA Phil. Neither of them seem to be bothered at all, their flute playing, by having an offset embouchure. Not at all. Like, they have gorgeous sounds, their technique is ridiculous, so definitely did not affect them. The other interesting thing actually um, that I didn't know about as much is that other instruments can have offset embouchures as well. It's I think a little bit more common for flute players but it can also happen for other instruments. So for instance one of my friends is in the LA Opera. I went to school with him at Colburn and he plays trumpet and he has an offset embouchure and is like an incredible incredible player. Obviously, it's not affecting him either. I you know, went to Colburn and then USC studied with Jim Walker, which is one of the most incredible flute players that there is, and he didn't tell me to change my embouchure. So yeah, I don't think that it would have been wise for me ever in the however many years, how many years is it now that I've been playing? 26 years? 27 years? 26 years. Yeah, 26 years I've been playing. And I, I just don't know what would have happened if I would have changed my embouchure. I think part of the reason that there is a misconception about this is that people maybe learned flute very quickly or learned one particular way or possibly they are teaching a big class. Like let's say they're a band teacher. Flute was not their first instrument. And I don't even know how band teachers do it, to be honest. I did sectionals with a band class, but just the flute players, you know, eight, 10 flute players. That was so hard. And that was my instrument. And I just never felt like I had enough time for each person. And I just, I don't know how band teachers do it. And props uh, to you guys. I don't know how you guys do it. And thank you so much for everything you're doing. And 
bringing music to schools. I think it's so incredible. If you do have a student that is playing flute and has an offset embouchure, if you are not a flute player, of course, like, Generally, a flute player should have a centered embouchure and generally a flute player should hold their flute straight. But there are instances, such as my instance, that that is not the case. I will do a whole nother video about holding your flute straight. <laughs> I get that. That's probably like the second most common thing I get. You're playing flute wrong. You're holding your flute, uh, you know, not, cent uh, not straight. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've been playing my instrument for 26 years. Like, I think I, I got it, but thank you for your concern. Um, but okay, if you are, <laughs> back to the topic, if you are a band teacher and you do have a student that does have an offset embouchure and um, you know, they have been playing for a little bit of time and flute again was not your first instrument, I would suggest, you know, maybe pulling them aside and like trying things with them to see what works best for them. Um, if you're still not able to come to a conclusion, I would really suggest sending them to a teacher, a flute teacher that, um, like a private teacher that they can work one-on-one -on -one with them to see what is best for them. You need that one-on-one -on -one instruction to tell you like, is what I'm doing actually good for my flute playing. You know, it's really hard to figure that stuff out by yourself. Um, these typically teachers have so much experience and will know like, okay, well you have an offset embouchure, but that is not gonna actually be good for your flute playing because it is, um, you're having problems producing a sound or you're having problems with flexibility and it is directly because of your embouchure. So it would be wise for you to actually change your embouchure that flute teacher will be able to make that call. Um, same thing that they see the embouchure and they're like, this is not affecting your playing whatsoever. So we are going to watch it, monitor it, make sure it never gets in the way. But as of now, you can continue with the offset embouchure. So I think that's really, really important. Um, if you are a player and you are experiencing somebody telling you you need to change your embouchure, no matter who it is, if you feel like you are able to have the flexibility and you are able to produce a good sound, you know, potentially get a second opinion. I don't know. I think it's something though that is really important to take extremely seriously. This is, you know, the embouchure is possibly one of the most important aspects of flute playing. It affects your sound which again is, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of flute playing. If you don't, you could have technique for days, but if you don't sound good, <laughs> that's, you know, ultimately people are listening to your sound. So you need to have a good sound. So again, go to somebody that you trust, make sure what you're doing is what you should be doing with your embouchure and really take you know, take the time that you need to find the right person to give you that advice because I think that's really, really important. Anyway, I think I addressed everything in that video. Um, <laughs> that I didn't get too heated. I'm proud of myself, didn't get too heated. But uh, anyway, if you guys have any questions about this at all, please leave them in the comments so that I can get back to you. I would love to have a positive discussion about this. I could see people attacking people in this and I want it to be a nice positive uh, discussion. So let's make it positive. And if you have ideas for other topics that you would like me to talk about, or you know, teach you guys, whatever it is, leave those also in the comments and I will do my very best to do those videos for you. I have a massive list right now of videos that I want to do. I'm really excited to be doing these for you guys, hopefully weekly, that's, that's my goal. So anyway, make sure also to subscribe to my channel. I'll have these again, hopefully weekly. And then I also have my flute reviews. I'll be teaching you how to play the ocarina, a bunch of other world flutes. I'll teach you how to play those as well. And I have a couple really fun, um, what would you call it? like my multi-tracks? I have a couple more of those coming out soon. I know I haven't done those for a little while. They take so long for me to do, but I will be doing those really soon. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and I will have a new video out for you very soon. See you then.